All right, guys, let's take a look at our next example. The next example says to evaluate the following integral. And we have 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 1, all multiplied by sine of 5x. Obviously, the first thing that we need to do is diagnose what type of a problem is this. Of the several techniques we've learned, which one will apply over here? And this is a very typical problem. None of you guys should have too much trouble realizing what to do over here. We have a polynomial multiplied by a trig function. Now, this could have also been some sort of an exponential function or maybe even a logarithm. When you have problems like this, the move is, of course, to use integration by parts which involves obviously memorizing this formula and applying it. So this is what we're going to do in this problem. Now, in order to apply the formula that you guys see over here, um, we need to calculate or find out a bunch of ingredients. Specifically, we're going to need what U is, what V is, what DU is. So we need those ingredients in order to apply this. And let's see if we can, you know, fetch them from our problem. Now, often in these types of problems, there's always going to be two pieces. Some of you guys like to think of this as the product rule when it comes to taking derivatives. But over here, we have these two pieces and we have to figure out which one to make u and which one to make dv. Now, generally speaking, u is the function that becomes simpler in complexity once you take the derivative of it. So in this case, if I, was, I have a cubic polynomial, taking the derivative is going to give me some sort of a quadratic. Whereas taking the derivative of sine gives me a cosine, which is about the same level of complexity um, as the original function. So there is no doubt in our mind that we're going to let u equal to this and dv equal to the rest of the problem. So remember, the ingredients that we kind of need over here are u, du, v, or rather, let's say dv, and v. So these are the four ingredients we need. And once we kind of have these, I'm going to just group this really quickly. Sorry, let's try that one more time. Once we kind of have these, um, it's a matter of plugging and playing into that formula. So we said that u would equal to 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 1. And dv, of course, is everything else. So sine of 5x dx. Now, once we have these two guys identified, finding the remaining two is a math matter of doing some basic math. To go from u to du, you're simply going to take the derivative. In this case, 9x squared minus 4x. And uh, for, don't forget that dx over here, because it's du by dx, and the dx goes there. Obviously, to go from dv to v, you're going to do the opposite um, operation, we will integrate here, and the integral of sine of 5x is cos of 5x divided by 5. Now that we have everything that we kind of need, we're in a position to apply the formula, so let's do that. So this formula is now going to become uv, that times that, let's write it. We'll put the negative sign up front in order to make it look a little nicer. So there's our u. Our v is going to be cos of 5x all over 5. Now you can put the whole thing over 5 or just this over 5. Do what you like. The negative sign is already out. Minus the integral of v uh, du. So this times this. So multiply these and put that here. I'll put the negative sign up front. I'll write the polynomial first. Once again, just to make things look a little nicer. And applying that formula once gives us this. Um, before continuing, notice that if you have a negative negative, we can kind of cancel those out. Just remove that and just make it a positive sign. That'll save us some time. And now we have to figure out how we're going to go about tackling this integral. So let's talk about how to do that. I'm just going to shrink this a little bit. Now, in order to tackle this, we have a very similar problem as the original one. We have a polynomial multiplied by some trig function. It turns out that in order to evaluate this guy, we're going to have to apply um, the same technique yet a second time. So we're going to need to recalculate 
these four ingredients um, a second time around. So if we do this over here, our u, of course, is going to remain the polynomial. So 9x squared minus 4x. Taking the derivative of this gives us 18x minus 4 dx. dv is everything that kind of remains. So in our case, cos 5x all over 5. And integrating a cosine gives us a sine. So cos of 5x is going to be sine of 5x divided by 5. But since there's a 5 already there, it's going to become 25. And we repeat the same exact procedure, applying the same exact steps. The integral of u dv gives us uv minus the integral of v du. And so if we do that, here's what we're going to end up with. Um, let's save some time over here. So this piece over here is now going to become uv. So that gives us. 9x squared minus 4x times sine of 5x all over 5. And once again, minus the integral of VDU. So minus the integral of this guy multiplied by this guy, giving us 18x minus 4 sine of 5x over 25 dx. And so things are coming along. We figured out the first two terms of our answer. But now we're stuck trying to solve this guy over here. And you guessed it. It is yet another integration by parts. Polynomial multiplied by a trig function. So for a third time, we're going to calculate our ingredients and repeat the process. Hopefully, this will be our last time doing so. So our ingredients are going to become u being our polynomial, du being the derivative, dv is sine 5x over 25, and the integral of which is going to become negative cos 25, uh, sorry, cos 5x divided by 5, but there's a 25 there, so 25 times 5 should be 125. And we apply our formula a third time. And so again, the first two terms are going to remain intact. And we're going to apply our formula for this piece here. Now notice that there's a negative sign here. That's going to have to stick around. And usually, when there is a negative sign, you want to write the rest of the answer in brackets. Because that negative sign is going to multiply into every term. So if I do this, uv is going to be negative 18x minus 4 cos 5x all over 125 minus the integral of v du. So that's going to be minus the integral of this guy times this guy. So minus 18 cos 5x over 125. And there's going to be a dx there. Let's make some room for it really quickly. And we're going to close our brackets. And we're almost there. Our next line should give us our answer. Um, unless you feel like spending one step simplifying things, which we, may, we might as well do, because it won't take very long. So if we just copy this one last time and take care of our signs before continuing. We will notice over here, for instance, this is a minus and a minus. Like before, that can go away and this can become a plus. But that minus also gets multiplied by this and this. So there's a minus, minus, minus. Our second term is going to be a negative one. So just keep one minus somewhere and eliminate the remaining ones. OK, so just stare at that for a second and it should make sense. Minus and minus, this first term will be a positive one. But the second one has 1 and 2 and 3, an odd number of negative signs. And therefore, it's a negative term. From here, we can write our final answer down. Because this guy, we know how to take the integral of without applying any technique. It's just a basic integral. The final answer to this problem, guys, is the following. Let me 
just check something. I just want to make sure we're doing things correctly over here. I believe this is correct. So essentially, so far, I've just recopied the first three terms, it seems. And then the last term over here, um, the, inter the antiderivative or integral of cosine is just sine. So there's a negative sign, 18 cos of 5x is going to become 18 sine of 5x divided by 5. So 125 multiplied by 5, what is that going to give us? Um, 500, 625, I believe. And don't forget that all important plus c at the very end. And that should be correct. Uh, let's just double check something very quickly. So it seems like we have made a little bit of a mistake. So it seems like we've made a little mistake. Let's just fix it very quickly. Because once we apply the formula over here, it should be uv, right? So if I multiply these two guys together, this should have been a 25. I just wrote a 5 there. So let's just fix that very quick, and then we should be OK. And that 25 kind of trickles down everywhere. And now that looks correct. So the moral of the story here is, guys, that this was a fairly long problem. And clearly, you saw me make a silly little mistake. There's a lot of room for error over here. Um, especially with the signs, and then, as you saw, um, we messed up the denominator over here. It turns out that we're going to solve this exact same problem um, using a second method, a table method that I'm about to show you. And not only is it going to reduce the time into less than a third, there's also a lot less room for error over here. So let's take a look at how we can solve this problem um, a second time. So let's just copy it. And we'll just paste it right here. And take a look at how we're going to do it now. So what we're going to do now is we're going to build a table that kind of looks like this. And on our table, on the left side, we're going to write u. And on the right side, we're going to write dv. And we're going to start with the u that we had picked up. So our u was 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 1. And our dv was sine of 5x. And I'm going to uh, omit the dx that generally would go here normally. What we're going to do over here, guys, is we're going to fill up this table. And the way to do this is that on the left column, we are going to keep taking the derivative over and over and over until we hit 0. If I do this, here is what I end up with. The derivative here is 9x squared minus 4x. Derive a second time, and you're going to get 18x minus 4. One more time is going to give us 18, and finally, we will get that 0. Similarly, we will integrate just as many times on the right side. The derivative, or rather the integral of sine, is negative cosine divided by 5. Integrate again, and this is going to give us negative sine 5x divided by 25. And we got to do this two more times. So if we do this again, this is going to give us positive cos 25, uh, 5x over 125. And lastly, finally, we get sine of 5x over 625. So we're almost there. It turns out that if we want to come up with our answer using the information that we kind of have over here, what we're going to do first is change the sign of every second term. That's my first term. Here's the second one. Slap a negative in front of that. Here's my third. The fourth, again, slap a negative there. And now we're done that. We're done, guys. Our final answer is simply this times this, this times this, this times this, and this times that. 
if we write that out, you will notice that you will get the exact same answer that you got previously. Take a look. If I multiply this and this, I get this polynomial multiplied by this term, which is right there. If I multiply this guy by this guy, notice the negatives will just disappear. I'll get a positive term, 9x squared minus 4x times sine of 5x over 25. That is exactly what I have here, and it's a positive term. Look at the third term, 18x minus 4 cos 5x over 125. 18x minus 4 cos 5x over 125. And lastly, you guessed it, minus 18 sine 5x over 60, 625, minus 18 sine 5x over 625. Hell of a lot quicker than what we did at first. Guys, if, especially if you're going into engineering, this is a method that you want to memorize or know because this is going to show up a lot in your future classes. Now remember I said that this method works often, but not always, okay? If your u does not end up going to zero upon taking derivatives multiple times, in the example, if this was a lawn, for example, then the method fails and you have to do this the longer way. Hopefully that was helpful. Let's move on to our next question.